there is a Christian woman called Asiya Bibi in Pakistan who's facing execution for, a, for what was essentially a feud between neighbours that ended up being transformed into, into a blasphemy charge. There is a Muslim poet called Hamza Kashgari who is convicted in Saudi Arabia for blasphemy for saying on, on Twitter that if he met Muhammad he would shake his hands as an equal. There is an atheist called Alexander Ann in Indonesia uh, who is in, in prison for having written on Facebook that there's no God and having published material about the, the life of Muhammad. There's obviously Sano's case, you know, a very significant one. And, you know, it's really important that, that we highlight these issues and, and that we're prepared to highlight the, the, the fact that it's not just atheists that, that, are, 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 uh, that are being persecuted. It's, it's also people of other religions than the majority religion in, what, in whatever country that the, the cases are taking place. And there, there was another just, just very worrying one, just literally over the last couple of days in uh, Indonesia, where Alexan is already jailed, where a, a law lecturer was uh, charged, uh, well, was arrested um, on accusations of blasphemy after he, he had published various things on, on Facebook, including from a law lecturer's perspective, criticising the, the, the current use of Sharia law in the province of Indonesia in, in, in which he lives. And it, somebody, some Islamist activist, wrote a letter to a local newspaper accusing him of blasphemy. Uh, as, and again, as, as is typical in, in these cases, a mob attacked his house. The police arrived. Uh, instead of arresting the mob, or at least dispersing the mob, they arrested uh, the, the, the victim of the attack. Officially, they do this on the basis of saying that, that, that they're protecting the person's safety. In, in fact, that's one of the arguments uh, brought against me in the uh and I went for an anticipatory bail. The prosecution said that he may be safer uh, if arrested, because otherwise the mob could attack him. Those mob attack uh, charts uh, in, in India. Yeah, and, and it's, it, it's so important it's, it's so important to recognize that it's, it's not just that there are blasphemy laws, which is bad enough. It, it's that even if they were valid, which they aren't, they're, they're being misused even by their own terms. They're, they're used to settle either political uh, differences or personal grudges. And in uh, Pakistan in particular, uh, when two politicians uh, spoke out publicly in support of Asiya Bibi, who was, who was facing execution there, uh, and said that we shouldn't be using blasphemy laws in, in cases like this, one of them, the governor of Punjab, was assassinated by his own bodyguard. And an another, <coughs> the minorities minister in the government, who was a, a Christian, uh, was also assassinated. As I was saying earlier on, I just find this so hor horrendous and, 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 and bizarre at the same time, that blasphemy laws are, you know, they're both silly and dangerous. And, and it's, it's such a, a, a unique combination, but a, it, it's really important to, to take on these issues. And another really frustrating point is when I, I put a post on my own website uh, the other day we, when we got news from our contacts in Indonesia about this law lecture who had been uh, arrested. The first few comments on that post on, on, on my website were from Indonesian Islamists saying that I don't know what I'm talking about and you know he, this, this guy did said other things about Israel and, um, and praising Allah and things like that. But one of them said, um, you, sh you should take care of your own country, which is chaotic enough, before you think about taking care of Indonesia. And it really shows, it's like the Pakistan citing Ireland as best practice for blasphemy laws. It, it shows how, how we are living in an interconnected world where, where what we do here, I'm assuming that what they're referring to is the international coverage of, of the, the death of Savita is, um, is, is we can't continue letting our politicians act as if we're living in this little bubble that we can do what we want and it has no effect uh, internationally around the rest of the world. You know, it's really, really important that, that we drag our politicians into the 21st century on, on these issues.